probably not, but it's fun anyway. Well, happy October, Melissa here. I just love the month of October. Fall colors, fall decorations, and of course, Halloween fun. Speaking of Halloween, Valley Kids' favorite event for fall trunk or treat is back. To best allow for safety and social distancing within this season, this year's trunk or treat is a drive through style with lots of family friend surprises, including an opportunity for you to be featured in a YouTube video. This year's event is Saturday, October 31st, Halloween day from two to four. Check out more information at ccblive.com. This month, we're starting a brand new series called Unmasked, which is kind of funny because in our current circumstances, we wear masks to most stores and, but in K3, when we're talking about being unmasked, we're talking about the importance of the word integrity, meaning choosing to be truthful in whatever you say or do. Sometimes we're so worried about being funny or smart or cool that we just forget to be ourselves. That's integrity. And that's something that I can get behind. Before we jump into our lesson taught today by Orange Kids, let's play a game. If you joined us last week, you're already familiar with it. Since our series is called Unmasked, we figured it'd be fun to finish out our What's Under the Mask trivia. Remember, your job is to guess what's under each mask. Think you can get them all correct? Let's unmask. to be like everybody else. But we'll find out if they were able to stay true to who God made them to be. But first, let's worship. Together, we're celebrating two new worship songs this month. Count down with me. Three, two, one. I was at a loss until you found me. You gave me a home within your love. I was running blind until you showed me that life could be this good. I want all my friends to know about you. No matter what it takes, I'll never stop. Everything I am is for your glory. My life's forever yours. I found one love, can't control it. Hit me like a wildfire, send me emotion. Nothing else compares, losing all my cares. Now that
in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. An amazing story, inspired by the book of Daniel, chapter 1. Daniel was only a very young man when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon conquered the land of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar made sure that God's people wouldn't rebel by taking Daniel and other young men from royal families in Judah and marching them back to Babylon with him. Will we ever see our home again? Daniel's friends were just as scared and confused as he was. Where will we live? What will he do to us? I sure hope the food is decent. Daniel tried to reassure them as the imposing city gates rose ahead. God will be with us, whatever happens. The king chose the brightest and best young men from Judah and ordered that they receive special training. After three years, you will get to be very important and serve me. The chief official Ashpenaz took charge of Daniel and his friends. <laughs> tut tut, those wishy-washy Hebrew names just won't do. You need new ones. New what? Names. <laughs> Let's see. Daniel, we'll call you Belteshazzar. And you three will be Shadrach, Meshach, 
and a bendigo. <laughs> Are those names, or is he just sneezing? You'll learn our language, of course, and all the Babylonian writings. <sighs> Daniel's heart sank as he realized what was happening. The king wanted Daniel and his friends to forget they were God's people. He wanted them to become Babylonians. But Abednego was worried about something else. Hey, I, I'm about to starve. Any way we can get a bite to eat? Mm -mm, right this way. Ashpen has led Daniel and his friends to a big table set with mouth-watering foods. Mmm, steak. Or those Babylonian buffalo bites. The cake's got at least nine layers. Only the best straight from the king's table. <sighs> oh, the food smelled delicious. But Daniel pulled his friends aside. Guys, if this food is from the king's table, that means it's been offered to false gods first. Uh-oh, not good. Our new names and training are one thing, but if we eat this food, it's like we're saying we're okay with false gods. But we gotta eat something, man. We can ask for different food, simple stuff that hasn't been offered to the false gods. With that chocolate cake! A bandico! Okay, okay. Daniel and his friends turned back to Ashpenaz. They tried to ignore the delicious smells wafting from the table. Uh, this all looks great, but could we eat something that's not from the king's table? It doesn't need to be anything fancy. The king is my master. He's decided what you must eat and drink. What if you don't eat this and he sees you looking worse than the other young man? He might kill me. No matter what Daniel said, Ashpenaz was too fearful to listen. So Daniel approached the guard assigned to take care of them. Please, just test us for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. See how we look then. Hmm. Well, if Brussels sprouts are your thing. For 10 days, the guards gave Daniel and his friends nothing to eat but veggies and water. I could get into the habit of cabbage. I like broccoli, probably. P pass the peas, if you please. I just want a hamburger. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy to say no to all those delicious foods the other young men got to eat. But at the end of 10 days, the guard called everybody out. Line them up. He strode past the other young men. Good, good. I can see you've been eating well. When the guard reached Daniel and his friends, he stopped in surprise. What? You've been eating rabbit food, but you look even better fed than the others. <laughs> Daniel smiled. God had helped them grow strong even without eating the food offered to false gods. Okay, fine. You can keep eating veggies and water. Rats. Thank you. God continued to give Daniel and his friends knowledge and understanding as they studied, and at the end of their training, they were brought before the king. Let's see what you know. How many inches in a meter? 39.3701. Hmm. What do you call a group of porcupines? A uh, prickle. If it takes eight men ten hours to build a wall, how long would it take four men? No time at all, because the wall's already built. Hmm. How are you all so smart? The one true God gives us wisdom. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. Anyhow, you're ten times smarter than my other advisors. You get to be very important and serve me. Daniel and his friends eventually became the king's most trusted advisors, and even though they served the king of Babylon, they never stopped standing strong for the one true God in everything they said and did. Okay, so Daniel and his friends were in a really bad situation. They were taken from their homes, they were forced to be some king's servants, but even then they chose to be true to themselves. They chose to live the way God wanted them to live. You see that kind of integrity a lot in the Bible. Think of Jesus. He was always true to himself. He could have gone along with the crowd, but instead, he lived the way he knew he was, even when it meant giving up his life for you and me. So how can we be true to ourselves? Well, 
It's great that you might want people to think you're funny, but not when you hurt someone else's feelings to get a laugh. And being cool, you know, is cool. Uh, but if you want to pretend to be something that you're not so that people think you're cool, that's not cool. Cool? So here's the one thing to remember today. Be truthful with your whole life. Let me say it again. Be truthful with your whole life. You can choose to be who God made you to be. To be honest and true in what you say and in what you do. It's just like our memory verse tells us for the whole month. It's from the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 9, and says this. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely. But anyone who takes the crooked path will get caught. Let's try it one more time. Anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes the crooked path will get caught. Nice job. Oh, and if you haven't already checked out our brand new YouTube segment called Dare Day, you've got to check it out. You can challenge our Valley Kids team to do a crazy dare, like juggling eggs or eating a plate of food with no hands or trying a crazy basketball trick blindfolded. Best of all, you get to be featured in the video when you do the dare. Head to ccvlive.com for more information and to submit your dare. Okay, bye K3, stay connected.